here and today we are going to finally make the scooter fast again. How? With these. Let's go. You see, in our last episode, despite spending a huge amount of time installing a more powerful motor, we didn't actually gain any appreciable speed. That's because while this motor is more powerful, it doesn't actually rotate quicker than the old one. What do we do? Well, we change the gearing. Here is the original 9 tooth gear that the scooter shipped with. Here is a 13 tooth gear. And here is a 15 tooth gear. Now this is what we're going to upgrade to today. Let me tell you a little bit about how all this gearing works. In our last episode, we installed a more powerful motor and yet our top speed was slower than before. Let's talk about why that is. It all comes down to gearing and RPM. You see, the stock motor had a rated speed of around 2750 RPM at 24 volts. Now, if I remember correctly, the RPM of a brush motor is pretty much proportional to voltage. Thus, if we increase the voltage by 50% to 36 volts, we get a corresponding increase in RPM. So if the stock motor has a rated speed at 24 volts of 2750 RPM, at 36 volts it should have a speed of around 4125 RPM. The motor then goes through a chain drive with an 11 tooth motor sprocket and a 55 tooth wheel sprocket. After the gear reduction, our rear wheel is now turning at 825 RPM. Now, the rear tire diameter is approximately 10 inches or 254 millimeters. That gives us a circumference of 798 millimeters. Now, a tire of 798 millimeters spinning at 825 RPM gives us a theoretical top speed of 39.5 kilometers an hour. Now, we never quite reached that in our previous videos, but we got somewhere in the 30s. Now let's run the calculation again for our new motor setup. Our new 500 watt motor's rated speed at 36 volts is just 2500 RPM. Even though our new motor is rated for higher power than our original motor, it's spinning slower at the same voltage. This is due to the way the coils in the motor are wound. So with our new motor spinning at just 2500 RPM, with its 9 tooth motor sprocket and 44 tooth rear sprocket, our rear wheel is now spinning at just 511 RPM, which comes out to a top speed of just 24.5 km an hour. Now this is a very interesting value because in our last episode, using a GPS speedometer, we measured a top speed of exactly 25 km an hour on the new motor. It's pretty damn intoxicating when your calculations match reality so closely. So the problem is that the gearing with this new motor setup is so low that the torque tries to throw us off the scooter and because the motor is spinning so much slower, our top speed is just 24.5 kilometers an hour. Now we need to change this, but without overvolting again to a higher value, we can't make the motor spin any faster. Instead, we need to change the gearing. So we're going to go from a motor sprocket of 9 teeth to a motor sprocket of 15 teeth giving us a gear ratio of 15 to 44. So with our new motor spinning at 2500 RPM and a gear reduction of 15 to 44, that means our rear wheel is now spinning at 852 RPM. Multiplied by the circumference, we get a theoretical top speed of 40.8 kilometers an hour, which is exactly what we want to be doing. What's more, because we're running this motor at its design voltage, we are far less likely to melt into a stinking rotten mess. So now we understand the gearing, we're ready to go ahead with the modification. Now it's a fairly simple job. All we have to do is put our 15 tooth gear on the motor and change the size of the chain to fit. Then we're ready to go. So let's get started. I'll first grab the flats of the motor shaft with these pliers. Not the best way to do it, but it works. And then we'll use our adjustable spanner to take the nut off the end. Now one thing to note is that this is actually a reverse thread, so righty tighty lefty loosey does not apply here. Now we can go ahead and slide on our delicious 15 tooth gear and tighten up the bolt again. Now we do need this nut on here nice and tight so the pliers aren't really going to cut it so instead I'll use a 10 millimeter spanner on the shaft and we can just go ahead and lock it up. That's on there nice and tight, excellent. So let's get our chain on and see roughly how it looks. Now fitting the chain back on and looking at how it lines up there is no way that is actually going to fit back on the scooter. We are going to have to break the chain and add in another link. Bit of a pain, but it's gotta be done. So I suspect there's some kind of divine intervention at play here because the chain broke really, really easily, no problem at all, and I found a spare link ready to sub in. So really, everything is just going perfectly. It's always nice when a job is unexpectedly easy. All we gotta do is knock those two puppies home and we are done. All right, that looks good. You'll know you're done when you're looking around and you can't actually figure out at an instant which pins were the ones you were knocking back through. That's how you know they're all nice and even. All right, let's go for the reassembly. Chain on. 
Galicias. A couple of wax with old Mr. Hammer. And we should be able to tighten those bolts up. Now that chain is firm, but really that's how we want it to be. I think that's just about the right amount of tension. Let's go ahead and bolt it up and get riding. Can't believe we're finally here. Nice and tight. Now I'm just loosening the motor mount and trying to realign things slightly because the motor isn't sitting dead straight right now and that's not really okay. You'll have all kinds of problem with, for example, the motor ripping its bearings apart if you don't have a dead straight chain drive. So we're just gonna have a play, see what we can sort out. Okay, so we're still in the process of just wriggling the motor mounts and the wheel back and forth, just getting everything neatly lined up and tightened back up. But, you know, par for the course. Hard work though, I'll tell you. Now with that chain in the correct plane, all nice and straight, that's actually rock solid. That's not really what we want. But I believe the chain will stretch a little more as time goes on. Plus I wanted a straight chain drive. I wanted the tensioner in the right spot. Now in the intervening time since the last video, I have made sure the batteries in the scooter are pretty much topped off. So we're gonna tighten up these other motor mounts and get this show on the road. I absolutely cannot wait. Oh my goodness. All right, it's the moment of truth. Big motor, correct gearing, I've got my safety line ready. Acceleration should be down, speed should be way, way up. Fingers crossed. Jeez. Oh yeah, that is more like it. Awesome, finally! <sighs> okay, wow, that was awesome. It's so much quicker now. On top of which, the longer gearing actually makes it much more controllable from a dead start, so you're not instantly flung off every time, so that is much better. There is a little shuffling sound I'm hearing. It sounds like the, uh, the brake is rubbing a little, so we're gonna dial that off, and then we're gonna try and figure out what our top speed is, but oh man, so happy with it. So happy. Okay, we have our brakes adjusted. We have our temperature gauge telling us whether the speed controller is going to blow up or not. And we have our safety pullout also in place. Let's try and set a speed record. Okay, that was awesome. Now after lots and lots of full throttle abuse, this thing's hitting 68 degrees, which is admittedly hotter than I would like. So I think we're probably pretty close to scorching those MOSFETs. So the motor itself is hot after all this full throttle abuse and that chain is unfortunately still way too tight. So I ran this hoping it would kind of loosen up. It hasn't, unfortunately. So that's not good. I've probably put all kinds of stress on this bearing. Now we've only hit a top speed of 34 kilometers an hour, which is Unfortunately, a bit slower than I'd hoped. It is a new record, it's our new top speed, and it's good and it feels fun, but I do want more, so. So it's the next day and I've decided 34 kilometers an hour just isn't fast enough, particularly because my initial calculation suggested with this gear set, it should actually hit closer to 40. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put another link back in the chain because this is way too tight. And I'm also gonna pump the tires up rock hard, which will A, reduce rolling resistance, and B, give us a greater rolling diameter on the tire, which you know could be worth one or two percent. Then we'll see how we go, fingers crossed. Now, the biggest pain is you can't actually pump these tires up with this custom gear on. There's just no way to actually get down to it. We're gonna have to take the wheel off and the cog to actually do it, which is a pain. After all that work, I still have this thing in the way, so, I may not actually be able to get my bike pump on there. And I don't have the extension that came with it specifically for this purpose, so I am crying right now. It is it is not a good day, I swear. So, it was exactly as painful as expected, but I did get the tire pumped up, so that is a win. Nice and firm now, but not too firm because then it'll explode. Because you just cannot win in this world. Okay, chains on the right side of the tensioner. Chains on the front sprocket. Chain is, come on. Chain is on the rear sprocket. And it's way too loose. Let's hope we can tighten that up enough to run. 
Okay, some good fortune. I actually found out that if I push on the right spot of the motor, I can actually basically set the motor tension as tight as I want. I reckon I want it about there. So that is good. We did have enough play in the motor mount after all. That is a relief. So now that we've got everything all bolted back together, we want to know what our theoretical top speed is, assuming that the motor has enough power to overcome things like rolling resistance, air resistance, drag from the brakes, all that sort of thing. We'll go ahead and place a reflective spot on our rear tire. Now we've got this reflective spot on here, we can measure the rotational speed with our photodetectometer. If you don't know how these work, I've got a great video on this here. And this will tell us in RPM how fast this rear wheel is spinning unloaded. We can then multiply that by the circumference of this wheel to get the speed the wheel is turning at in meters per second, kilometers per hour, what have you. Now, that's a theoretical top speed because when I'm on the scooter, there's a lot more rolling resistance, there's a lot more air resistance because the scooter is actually trying to move through space. So this is only a theoretical top speed. We probably won't be able to reach this unless our motor is incredibly powerful, but it gives us a good idea for a ballpark of what we might be able to achieve. Let's go ahead and take a measurement. So we got a reading there of 1229 RPM. So now we'll measure the circumference of this rear wheel and get an idea of what our theoretical top speed could be. I remember being in reception when they taught us how to measure round things, which was, you know, a really important skill for any mechanical engineer, even if he was five. Okay, come on. <clears throat> the important part is to make sure you're measuring the widest part of the wheel. Obviously a multimeter probe isn't always the ideal way to do it, but it'll get the job done. Keep in mind, this is a very approximate measurement. So right there, we then come to our measuring tape. Okay, so we came in right around 725 millimeters here. That's good enough for our purposes. Let's multiply that by 1229 RPM and see what we get. So 725 millimeter circumference times 1229 RPM equals 891,025 millimeters per minute, which is 891 meters per minute. Now that comes out to 53 kilometers per hour. So 53 kilometers an hour, that's pretty fast. But in our first test, we only went 34 kilometers an hour. So where's all the speed going? Well, it's going a bunch of places. Number one, the obvious, it's air resistance. When the scooter's moving along down the street, the air's resisting my motion, it's drag. The motor has to try and overcome that. Number two, rolling resistance. The tires themselves actually deform when you step on the scooter and as you're rolling along. That again is another loss that the motor has to spend power to overcome. To try and reduce this rolling resistance, we've pumped up the rear tire, we're going to pump up the front tire. That's going to actually help us in two ways. One, the tire is going to flex less, so we're going to lose less energy as the tire rotates. Two, it's actually going to make the circumference of the tire ever so slightly bigger. It might only be worth one or two percent, but everything helps here. Three, drivetrain resistance. Now that's all the losses in transferring power from the motor here to the rear wheel here and then to the ground. Now the drivetrain losses were particularly bad on our first run because we had this chain incredibly tight and we could actually feel the chain warming up from all that wasted energy after our first few speed runs. Loosening the chain off has hopefully reduced those drivetrain losses and that should get us a bit more speed. Those three losses are the main ones that are gonna lose us speed over that theoretical max of 53 kilometers per hour. There are others, but they're pretty middling. They're nothing to really worry about. Hopefully, just by loosening off that chain drive and pumping up the tires, just reduce our losses enough that we can really get this thing moving. I just want a few more kilometers an hour. I want to crack 35. I want to get as close to 40 as I possibly can, and I can't wait to try it out. Let's get it bolted up. We're going to thrash this thing. Let's go. All right, we're charged up. We did the tests. We've pumped up the tires. It's time to see how fast this thing can go. This is the top speed run. Fingers bloody crossed, eh? Come on. Come on. Well, <laughs> it's quick, but God, I do not trust the brakes. Let's have a look. Holy crap, holy crap. Can you read that? Can you read that? Max 39, holy crap, holy crap. Look at that, we gained five kilometers an hour purely just from loosening the chain. 
pumping up the tires. 39, we are so close. I'm going to absolutely fang it one last time. I'm going to see if we can crack 40. That would be so, so sweet. What is good news is the temperature of the controller hasn't even exceeded 40 degrees, which is just, you know, that's excellent. This thing is proving quite reliable. Yes, it is a cool night, but I think we finally actually got a fast, reliable scooter that I can actually ride. Okay, so it's a nice sunny evening. I'm here with my mate Jack and Dactyl. We've got the scooter out. We're going to go for one more speed run, then we're just going to have some fun with it. Fingers crossed, should be a lot of fun. Let's go. Just want to get to 40. One more try. We gave it two top speed runs. We're only getting 38. The scooter in this, guys, isn't quite going to go 40 k's. It's not, but it is a hell of a lot of fun. What's awesome is with this motor and this gearing, the scooter's fast. It's real fast, but it doesn't throw you off when you hit the throttle. It's really, really drivable, and I actually really enjoy it. Now, it's not all roses. There are some drawbacks, number one of which is we've lost a lot of ground clearance with the bigger motor. It is harder to take tight turns, but what I like to do is I just slow down and then I blast it when I get back to the straight, and it's awesome fun. Big thanks to Jack for lending his phone for the GPS Speedo here, and um, we're gonna hang around and have some fun. You ready? I'm ready. Let's go. All right, this is Jack's first ever ride of the Razor. Let's go. <laughs> All right, tentative start. What do you think? Oh, it's exhilarating. Love it. Um, Lovely and quick, gives you a bit of a kick when you put your throttle down and uh, a little bit of a wobble when you release, but other than that, lovely. How fast do you think you went? At least 100. Uh, a million? I think you were going a million there for a while. Uh, well, maybe two, who knows? Did you notice that dodgy Suzuki following you? I swear to God, I thought he was gonna hit you. I was a little bit, uh, a little bit suspicious about it, but um, you know, at the end of the day, I'm alive and that's all that matters. Me and Jack have been absolutely flogging this. The MOSFETs are now sitting up to almost 77 degrees, still holding up. Oh, so much fun, so much fun. Now, at this point, I could go on and on about everything that's happened in the last 12 months working on this thing, but frankly, I don't have to. All I'm gonna say is it is finally awesome and I am stoked. <laughs> and now, the last question on everybody's lips. Will it do a burnout? Yes! Yes, it will! Till next time, TK out.